Hi, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick. What we're looking at here is my home theater system. I'm gonna go over how to build one. Let's start with the room. Let's start with the room and arranging things because that's gonna be the most important thing. So let's pretend this rectangle is my room. Depending on what you want to arrange it as, okay, maybe you want the screen to be on this wall, perhaps the adjacent wall, but let's pretend that it's going to be this long wall here. You're going to have to measure out, of course, what screen size you want. In my case, I wanted the 120 inch on diagonal, which uh, dimensionally turned out to be about, I think, 110, maybe 111 inches in actual physical width so just something to keep in mind and keep in mind the distance between the screen and the projector that's going to depend on what projector you buy but in my case to achieve 120 inches it had to be at least 11 feet away from the wall um, in an ideal world if you're going to go with a regular projector you want it to be as centered as possible because if it's off axis um, you're going to have to play some strange compensation games and they will not always yield very good results. So dead center, which means it's probably best to mount the projector first before you mount the screen. Um, as for the couch, again, in my case, I'm going to switch the color here a little bit. Uh, the couch is like right here, just about. And this really is good because for the most part, the people are going to be residing like here and maybe here so they, they they kind of have center view now speakers right you probably heard about surround sound and well what do the numbers mean 5.1 7.1 10.2 well uh, let's let's put that on screen 5.1 the first number here represents the number of regular speakers and in my case that's what i went with i went with five speakers so let's 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 draw them and how you would want to arrange them. So you got a uh, front left speaker, front right speaker, rear right speaker, and rear left speaker. Oh, and then last but not least, center speaker, which you're going to want to place, yeah, obviously somewhere in here or as close to center as possible. So that's going to be your surround speakers. Now the point. The point one, however, that refers to the number of subwoofers. Um, you can have multiples, but yeah, in this case, 5.1 means one subwoofer. And what I did was I put it right here, um, kind of behind the couch, kind of right up there in my bum, so I can feel that heart pounding action, in this case, butt pounding action. Um, but yeah, if you had like a 7.1, okay, that would probably like be two extra speakers here and here but again you want to arrange it in such a manner as to be equidistant from where your head is going to be to all the speakers um including the center one the sub doesn't actually matter too much it's just like a kind of a noise machine so it can be behind you in front off to the side again doesn't really matter but if at all possible, try to put it center as well. And in my case, it worked out really nice. And finally, as an aside, if you decide to go with a short pro projector, um, know this. I, I went with one and it didn't work for my space. I made a whole video about it. But uh, basically, it would have to be somewhere around here. Um, the only trouble is it has to be so low to the ground that you have, a, have to have a really tall ceiling. Anyways, I go into that in great detail in the previous video for why doesn't really work for most spaces so you're really just better off buying a standard projector also because it just happens to be that much cheaper than a short throw now let's talk equipment you're gonna need speakers a projector a projector screen a receiver and all kinds of stuff to go along with it the uh, speaker wires hdmi cables and whatever your source is whether it's a playstation roku or a blu-ray player Alrighty, uh let's expand on this equipment business a little bit uh, i failed to mention a few things so it all starts with the receiver because the receiver is going to be where uh what's going to be powering your speakers but it's also what all your equipment is going to be hooked up to it kind of acts as an hdmi switchboard uh, then obviously the, the the speakers are in the mix. You have a 
projector ceiling mount. This is the Vivo, and I have a link to all of these in description, and I do recommend most of them. Uh, projector, in my case, it's a BenQ HT3550, which has been absolutely incredible. A whole mess of HDMI cables, short and long. Um, then you're gonna need a screen, speaker wire, and finally, speaker mounts. You're gonna want these speaker mounts if you plan on screwing them, like mounting them on the wall, on the ceiling, or anything of the sort. Let's talk about how all of this gets hooked up. Now I'm gonna get rid of most of this. Like I said, it starts with your receiver. There's gonna be an HDMI arc output, that's and that's gonna go into HDMI in on your projector. The speakers are all going to have this um, two conductor wire or cable, like I showed, and they all have a home. It'll be labeled very nicely, um, like, you know, speaker right, speaker left. Now the sub uh, with these clips, it's actually quote unquote wireless. So it has a dongle that you plug into the back of this that acts as a wireless transmitter, but you do have to plug it into um, an outlet. So. From there, let's say you have, you know, a Roku represented here in by this rectangle here. That's going to go into also an HDMI port, but not HDMI arc. It's going to go into, say, HDMI 2. So HDMI arc, let's explain that for a second. Arc, I don't even remember what it stands for, but basically it can act both as an input and output, and audio can travel over it. Ordinarily, you would have... Um, some kind of optical speaker or optical audio wire going from your projector to your um, receiver, but not with HDMI arc. The signal travels, both the video signal and the audio signal travel over this um, arc protocol or whatever you want to call it. So relatively simple. That's what the setup is. And then yeah, if you have yet another device, let's say this is a PlayStation, same thing, that's going to go into HDMI 3. And so What's going to act as the switchboard, you're going to have a remote for your AV receiver and you're going to switch between these two things. So it's your Blu-ray player, your Roku, your PlayStation, whatever it is, and it then broadcasts that signal over to your projector. Now that we're educated, let's talk about the room itself and how to actually turn it into a theater. Step one, we kind of just taped a, a carpet pad and then attached a carpet over this cold floor. Two reasons. First of all, it makes it cozier, obviously, but number two, it reduces echoes in the room, which is an important part of sound treatment. Without anything in it, it's quite slappy in here. Next up, it was about creating outlets, audio jacks, and the HDMI outlet. To get that accomplished, to route the cable, what I actually did was I removed the can lights and I snaked the cable right through it, through the ceiling that is. So I basically start on the other side of the wall and I snake my HDMI cable, I snake a power cable for the outlet for the projector and I basically did the same for the um, speaker wires. You can see how there's just space between the joists that support the floors and the ceiling and I just daisy chain the power, and this is my HDMI outlet. You can buy that at any hardware store. And make sure to shell out money for a good cable that you're gonna be routing to your projector. It needs to be thick with thick gauge. Otherwise, you really risk signal loss and you don't want to be snaking cable all over again. It sucks to do, it takes a long time. Next, mounting speakers. You can see how I use the speaker mounts, but more importantly, there's the audio jack. Again, you can get that from the hardware store, and it's connected all the way back close to the receiver with another audio jack through, again, that two-conductor cable, and I did this to hide the wires away. Otherwise, it looks real ugly. Next, let's talk screens. So this is a 120-inch diagonal. Important thing number one, has to be 16 to 9 ratio. The first one I bought was 1 to 1. I thought it was going to be 120 inches, but it was a square. Very stupid, very misleading. To mount it, it's a two-man job, two-person job. Use a level, basically screw one, uh, screw in, and then position the other one. 
uh, while checking on the level. Now on the other side, I actually attached wood so that it's not just supported by drywall. I just wedged this piece of wood in between two studs and that's a good support. Important to know about screens. Some people say, oh, you need an ALR screen, which is uh, ambient light rejection screen. That's really only necessary if you plan to be in a room that has a lot of ambient light. In my case, since I'm in the basement, I didn't have to shell out the really big bucks for that. Instead, I just got like a standard but high quality uh, roll down projector. And though I explained this in Microsoft Paint, it's good to see it in reality. So here is the receiver, the back of the receiver. Here's all the audio connections to the speakers. Uh, that black wire, black cable goes to the subwoofer, um, and that's its wireless transmitter. And there on the left, you're going to see all the HDMI cables. So the HDMI out labeled ARC, that goes to the projector. Then on one and two, I've got my Blu-ray player and my... Roku. So again, the receiver switches between all of these and then transmits the signal to that jack and the jack is connected then behind the wall all the way to my projector through those uh, ports over there. The back of the projector is nothing special. I just have the power cable and an HDMI cable going to that jack I created. So uh, step one of Mounting this BenQ projector onto the ceiling is obviously going to be a ceiling mount. Now, this is what Amazon recommends as a frequently uh, bought together with. So I'm like, okay, well, certain higher IQ than me individuals have worked with this, I guess. But come to discover that the BenQ has this hump and... Due to the design of this, you will not be able to flush mount these legs into the holes, which are quite strange because there's actually only three of them. Three M4 holes with the center of gravity. It does label it, interestingly, somewhere around here. Um, I assume people just mounted crooked then. They probably unboxed it and said, oh, screw it, and just put it in, and then it's just lopsided, and then make a finer adjustments later. But what I did was, what I recommend is actually buying some M4 standoffs. These aren't exactly standoffs. What I did, what I had, um, I think it was a 3 inch, 3 16th inch aluminum pipe that I cut to size. And then I used longer length M4 screws. Again, something I had in my collection. Not something that came with this nor with the projector. So just a little bit of a brain dead design on... Honestly, both their parts. <laughs> now it's time to mount the mount. What I did was, you see there are four holes. Two of them are drywall anchors and two of them I actually used screws that are long enough to reach a stud. I found a stud in the ceiling because it doesn't actually recommend that you just mount it to drywall. Otherwise, it'll probably just pop right out. Though I will say you can probably get away with using a toggle bolt to sus basically suspend it from the drywall. Regardless, once you've got it mounted to the projector, you kind of hook the projector on. You gotta have these plastic washers on each side, and then you screw everything in. Next up comes the really fun part of aligning everything properly. This is where you'll want to turn on this matrix-like test pattern and then use the knobs here, which are um, focus, zoom, and lens shift. Lens shift uh, shifts the lens up and down. Zoom obviously zooms it in. And you're going to want to start playing those games to align it properly, but also use loosen and tighten those bolts and move it around. In the end, this is how it would look like almost in an ideal situation the perimeter of the test pattern should be butted up right against the black portion of the projector screen. Part of this adjustment is going to be the keystone adjustment, which is a setting within the projector, but use sparingly because it's a digital adjustment, so that actually is detrimental to the image quality. From there, that's about it. Uh, the performance of this then is going to be dictated by the quality of the projector, the quality of the screen, and just how much ambient light there is and if there is a lot such as you if you want to do daytime viewing 
gonna have to probably invest in ALR, but for me, the, the result is just spectacular. It is ridiculous. I get the same kind of vibe as I would from watching all this stuff in a movie theater, which increasingly my desire to go to a movie theater has been just plummeting ever since fun was banned and then restored and then they moved to putting couches instead of seats so you can never get a ticket. The resolution is really quite incredible and the Roku, as usual, does very nicely. It's probably one of my favorite little devices. The biggest factor here is probably going to be source material. So, you know, YouTube will have its fair bit of compression even for 4K videos. But Blu-ray looks stunning. So Blu-ray, they'll call it UHD, 4K, blah, blah, blah. Looks incredible. And even so, even YouTube, like this is again me filming with my phone, though I crop the image a little bit to get rid of the screen. You have so much resolution. It's ridiculous. It's kind of hard to describe, but even through my phone, it looks stunning. Anywho, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.